All right. Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. There we go. All right. Hi. I am your host, uh, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. And Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, webcast, online show. Um, the terminology is up for debate to some people. I don't know, we call it a webinar. <laughs> um, but whatever you like to call these things, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, if you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and the recording is then made of, um, uploaded to the Library Commission's YouTube account. Um, so you are able to um, watch our recordings there um, if you want. Uh, both the live show and the recorded shows are free and open to anyone to watch. So do um, share with your any of your colleagues that you think might be interested in any of our topics. Um, actually, any of your colleagues, friends, neighbors, family, anybody who you think might have an interest in something, send them to our website. <coughs> excuse me to register for our upcoming shows or to watch our recordings. And um, I will show you at the end of today's show where all those archives are on our website as well, so you can um, uh, find them later. We do a um, mixture of things here on Encompass Live, uh, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products. Basically our only criteria is something library related, uh, something libraries are doing, some resource or service we think they could use, um, something we think they should be using. Uh, some of our topics might seem a little outside the box. You might look at it and see the, you know, the title of something and say, I don't get it, but trust us, I make sure everything comes around to libraries in the end. <laughs> that is our focus here, of course. Um, uh, being hosted here out of the Nebraska Library Commission, we do sometimes have library commission staff that do um, sessions, but we also bring in for things that are library commission centric, things that we're doing, services we're providing, programs we're doing here, but we also bring in guest speakers from around the state and around the country, actually. Um, and that's what we have today. To my left today is Annette. Um, um, I, I've met part, part Party of, Moss. Party Moss, yes. I know the Moss part, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, well, she's various things. Maybe I'll let you introduce yourself with your dad. But she, anyways, medical research is what we're talking about today. Medline, PubMed, things we've all used or encountered, I would hope, at some point. But there's a lot of different versions of these things out there now. And Annette knows all about these, and she's going to tell us um, how we can use them all. Sounds what good. they're all about, so I'll hand over to you to take it away. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm Annette Party Moss, and I'm the Education Outreach Coordinator for the Mid-Continental Region of the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. Um, and I'll explain that here in a second, but today my uh, presentation is PubMed, PubMed Central, Medline, Medline Plus, what's the difference? And um, so today, the idea is by the end of this, you'll be able to differentiate between those four resources um, and what they all offer. Um, know where to seek help with these resources. I will be, I can be one of that, that help, that staff, and if I don't know the question, I can forward that up to the powers that be that know more than I. Um, and also I will show you where you can find tutorials and things on those websites. So if you're just trying to get familiar with them or to see what things they may offer, um, I'll show that. I'll probably kind of a brief overview, but again, um, my contact information will be at the end of the presentation. Krista will have it as well. You are welcome to send me any questions you have, um, even health information related, but especially when it comes to any National Library of Medicine resources. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is to recognize when to use the resources and for which audience, um, because they are different and they offer different things. And so I'll kind of give some, um, we'll show some example searches, maybe some different cases that you might have where you can use it, and um, to know that they're they're not necessarily like one type of library specific, that these aren't just for hospital librarians or for health science librarians or certain ones are for public, or they, they all can kind of be used in different situations. So, to give you That's an overview, I, <laughs> I know that it was that not just Nebraska, but in some sort of region, and that's a cool map that we're talking about now. <laughs> so, that's the part, like, that is the mid-continental region of the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. So, what the, the network is all these libraries that join in together, but there's these regional um, kind of headquarters. Our, our region here in the middle of the country is a little different in the fact that we have representatives 
located physically in each state. Um, the other regions have kind of one headquarters um, that they all are based out of and, and they go outreach to the other states that are in that region. So here, you know, we happen to have me here in Nebraska, we have say Dana Abbey in Colorado and uh, Lisa Lilich in Kansas and Barb Jones in Missouri, Jim Honor in Wyoming, um, John Bramble in Utah as well as then Utah's where our official headquarters are but I'm here based um, in Nebraska and Omaha at Creighton University. So that's we're kind of odd in a way, So we, but I, we support all of these states. Um, and the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, these regional headquarters, were really outreach for the National Library of Medicine. So I did a little acronym definition on the side, so you start seeing that NLM, NNLM, all of that. Um, and the National Library of Medicine is under the NIH, which at the bottom of your screen, you'll see our, our lovely mm -hmm. logo now and kind of how that all intertwines. It's nice to see how it breaks down, how the hierarchy is. And, and, it's, and they've, they've tweaked the logo this last year, well, not more than tweak, really redesigned. Um, and it's nice because it does give that, that full view of what the heck we are and how we fit into all of this. Right. So. Um, needless to say, or um, I shouldn't say needless to say, in order to summarize very briefly, I'm here to help find health information. Um, I can train, I can do outreach specifically and talk to people about National Library of Medicine, but I also talk about free and other open resources. So that's something I can offer for you, um, your libraries, I can help with questions, but I can also do online and in-person trainings, especially the in-person if it's in Nebraska, um, but that's also not limited because we do have other people in other states too. So the focus of today are these four resources and how they fit in together. Um, you'll see this diagram and takes on it throughout my presentation because I was trying to figure out a way to kind of visually represent it and I'll explain how they fit in and why I've kind of chosen this way to do it um, as we go along. But we're talking Pub PubMed, Medline, Medline Plus, and PubMed Central. So the first one I'm doing is Medline and it's, um, the core database. It was the one that's been around the longest and what a lot of these resources have built upon over time. It has its reference database of more than 23 million um, references to journal articles and it specifically life sciences with a focus on biomedicine. So again, it is this is the this is the core, this is the base, this is the thing that's been around and the mm, thing that I've like heard about this one for years and years. Yes. Yeah, but... And so a lot of times people equate Medline with PubMed there's some similarities, and Medline is in PubMed, which I'll explain in a bit too, but it gets a little confusing because there's addition things, there's additional things that PubMed offers, mm -hmm. um, but you can find Medline articles, or the Medline, excuse me, re references. So there's not articles speci specifically in Medline, it's the references to the articles. You can find those using PubMed. And also, like, so some of you I know would have like EBSCO um, subscriptions that have an EBSCO Medline. That kind of same kind of thing is EBSCO's having kind of they they add some value um, on their end to their Medline searches. But really, when it comes down to it, you're using that interface to still search Medline, um, and it's that same core database. Mm -hmm. And the thing too would be this is not full text. And here Correct. This is just the citations. Yep. So Medline's just the citations. Um, and officially, so is PubMed, although the full text part gets kind of nicely intertwined. Um, so it, it, you're not necessarily going to see separate that you're, oh, I'm going out from two full text. It's going to seem like it's really integrated in PubMed, but officially it's not. It, that's a pretty fine line, though. The one thing is, is so. My previously here, if I can, okay, so Medline has more than 23 million references. PubMed has about 26 million references. So Medline makes up the most of PubMed, and you can find Medline by using PubMed, but there's still this other like three plus million um, that is a little, that PubMed has that Medline does not. So part of that includes these bullet points that I have on the side. Um, it's including in-process or pre-Medline citations. So there's certain journals that are involved in PubMed. So before those references are actually published, it's the ones that are, are working on it and they're not quite Medline ready, but you can find them in PubMed. Um, you can also find out-of-scope articles. So PubMed had that very specific, narrow biosciences um, approach, whereas in PubMed you can find things like, say, um, if it's an article from a Medline journal that's been approved in Medline, but it's an article on plate tectonics, mm -hmm. it technically wouldn't be found in Medline um, unless it had a health science related to it, right. but you can find it in PubMed. 
again, really simple, like really fine lines here, but yeah. that's why it gets kind of confusing because they all kind of blend. <laughs> um, and then also there's um, the NCBI bookshelf is is vast and wonderful um, and is bioinformatics ebooks mm -hmm. that are free and open and you can also search them using PubMed. So that's, nice. you don't have to worry about going out to NCBI Bookshelf itself, but you can search for those bioinformatics resources using PubMed. Um, and then also PubMed has some citations, or there are citations to some PubMed central journals that aren't specifically also in Medline. So there's some things that are in PubMed central, which is full text, all of which, mm -hmm. and that are in PubMed that necessarily wouldn't be in Medline. And again, these are a lot of fine lines and hairs, but it also helps, and I'll show you later, about when you go to search and how you can limit. Um, and so if you're trying to get full text only, you're really going to be kind of searching PubMed Central or right. any, sometimes publishers provide open full text articles or also institutions can do link out from PubMed. So if you have a subscription to a database that has articles, you can incorporate your your institutions. Mm -hmm. They'll be able to tell, you know, where your institutions that kind of like I would think of it as like kind of Google Scholar-ish. That it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you want to find this full text article in your institution? Click here. Yeah. So it's and I'll explain PubMed Central here in a little bit. But if you're finding full text <laughs> articles in PubMed, oftentimes That's you're really linking to PubMed Central. Central. It's nice though that it seem and it'll seems kind of seamless to you though you don't really realize. It, and well, it a, is, a user wouldn't realize that they've been thrown out to somewhere else. Or exactly, whatever. and most and most of PubMed Central will be found in PubMed. So that's I. It's very light on here, but kind of with the, the bigger PubMed circle that incorporates a lot of this, if not all of it. So it's going to have all of Medline. And it's going to have most of PubMed Central. There may be. There, there's going to be maybe a little bit of a sliver of PubMed Central that isn't in PubMed. And there's there are very good reasons for that. There's some approved PubMed Central journals. Oh, um, that <laughs> necessarily... Publishers a lot of times have the ultimate control about where their articles are going to appear, yeah. And that's and that's a lot of it. It's also sometimes with PubMed, to get in there, you need to be a Medline journal. And sometimes, too, if you're a smaller journal or um, an international journal, it's it can be harder or there's things that maybe you don't quite qualify for but you still have some health sciences articles mm -hmm. so it's there's it's kind of interesting as to how you can get in and there's specifics on that too that I can happily share with somebody to explain what mm -hmm. the differences are between the, the the journal sets but most of the big part today the takeaway I want is that they're different <laughs> like that's the big part um, yeah. they aren't going to be PubMed Central and Medline don't because it's in one doesn't necessarily mean it's in the other. And that's where it can get kind of confusing. Um, but there are, I mean, it is pretty seamless between PubMed and PubMed Central. And PubMed Central is that full text archive and it's open. If it's in PubMed Central, you know it's going to be an open full text article. Cool. And then using all of this information, you have Medline Plus, which also gets confused with just Medline itself, mm -hmm. but really it's this this value-added information that it, it is designed for patients, families, con and other consumers. So it'll take these PubMed articles and kind of use that as a base, or Medline articles and use that as a base, but really it's got this big overview, um, like if you go and search a disease, say it's diabetes, it'll give you an overview of what, what really diabetes is about in, in plain, simple English, as, many, as often or as much as they can. Um, and then below that, it'll give links out to other credible resources, but then also links to these journal articles. So it's it's a nice way to start at an overview. And um, it also gives news, um, and you can, and it'll link out to other websites, so like Mayo Clinic, um, that's one, um, uh, Ethnomed, um, diff different ones that are credible resources vetted by the National Library of Medicine. So it uses Medline, and PubMed articles and Pub Central article, PubMed Central articles even to, to kind of create this information, but it isn't isn't just a, a database or a search engine for articles. There's a lot more there. I like about the the these websites that it links to have actually been evaluated by yes. um, NLM because there's a lot of of everything out there on the internet, but a lot of medical information from some not so um, accurate sources. And if you just go and Google these things, you're gonna find you're gonna find links to Medline Plus or to Mayo Clinic. But mixed in there, you're gonna find who knows what. Um, and 
if you can just have people just look at this, go here first. What it goes to, what it links to is the ones you really want to listen to. And that's also, with Medline Plus, since it is a federal government resource by the National Library of Medicine, there's no ads. You're not mm -hmm. going to be asked to do a subscription. You, you can create like PubMed accounts and things like that if you want to, but you don't have to. The reason you do that is to like save searches, um, that kind of stuff. So can, especially if you're doing a lot of research, it can be really useful. But things, otherwise, you're not going to be forced to create an account. You're not going to be seeing any ads. Um, and it's been vetted resources, um, or at least like with like the case of Medline, the journal itself is vetted, and the articles that go into it um, then would be health sciences ones from those journals. So that's this is like the big overview. So that's kind of going back to my original diagram is that we have the big PubMed that kind of incorporates searching Medline, searching most of PubMed Central, um, and then also making the basis for Medline Plus. Um, so that what I'm going to do from here on is really focus on PubMed and Medline Plus and showing you what they offer because PubMed is going to incorporate most of Medline or I was going to incorporate all of Medline and most of PubMed Central. Um, so if you can go out and look at PubMed Central by itself and kind of see the difference, but I'm going to focus on those other two really as so you can see kind of the difference between the two and then also how to search in PubMed for just those limiters of how to search just for Medline, how to search for just full text, which is a lot of which is PubMed Central. So we'll still come back to those, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be using just two resources to kind of simplify this whole thing. So my quick tour here, we're gonna... If you go down the bottom, you can see there's the there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm gonna give a tour before we do sample searches and things. Um, and the big things is, I should pull this back up quick. I wanted, like I said, I wanted to do, uh, show you the limiting um, and then also how to, for showing limiting for, pep, for Medline, showing limiting for full text, and also where to find help. Um, so that way if you're just stuck and you're like, I just want to know quickly how to do this, and that's where I'm going to start quick first, and then I'll go back to the searching. So the PubMed tutorials is from the homepage. So PubMed.gov will get you to this URL. And the tutorials link is right on the homepage on the left of using PubMed. And there's a quick start guide. There are full text articles. That, there's FAQs. There's all kinds of stuff. I think the, the easiest part for me to start was the tutorials. I know there's probably other people who have other, other ways they would like to start. Um, but for this, the reason I like this is because there have been some very specific um, tutorials that will describe the scope, so what I'm doing now, but in a more depth resource. Mm -hmm. It'll also go PubMed for nurses. That was something that just came out October 2015, and it's tutorials geared specifically toward nurses. Um, so this is some of these like, kind of value-added pieces that I wanted to show that are right here, and these are also, you can see when they're regularly updated very easily. Um, for those of you that deal in mesh, there's a nice one there. Searching drugs or chemicals in PubMed and how to do that. But then below that, there's these quick tours. Um, so these are just going to be these one to two minute videos of, I just want to know how to search PubMed by author. There you go, it's a two minute video. So that's why I like this tutorials page, because you can see how long it is, um, and, and it'll give you very specific things of, here's if this is what you want to search for, here's the video for you. And I, that, like, especially starting out new, I like this, but even if you're trying to get more advanced, you will get to see the, the, here's the saving searches, preferences and filters, there's advanced searching tools, and here's like their webcasts and videos. So these are, you've already been using PubMed for a while or you're like, you feel like you got a good grasp of it quickly, here's where you can go to get a really in-depth piece of how to expand it for you. And different webcasts that they have offered on PubMed searches, that kind of stuff. And some of it's in NLM, so people, um, like my colleagues around the country, some's coming from NLM itself. Um, it just it depends on the resource. So again, this is why I like this page, um, because you can also then here too, it will give you ideas of how long this is. So like for the advanced PubMed tips, tricks, and tools, that's a 95-minute commitment. <laughs> yeah. I like the other ones that are just these short one, two, three minutes, because if you don't want to sit through... I want to just get to the part of this hour-long workshop that was about whatever breaking up like this is really nice. And I think especially when you're starting out on something because you're like, ah, okay, so do I, yeah, yeah like, do I give a full 90 minutes hoping something works for me here? Or hey, this is a place where I can start. I found this to be the best place to start when I was first searching and figuring out what I wanted to do and making sure I was using it to its fullest. 
Um, and it kind of, and it's a nice little teaser. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to quick cut this down. And then the related to that, and I know it's linked in PubMed, but what I how it's easier for me to get to is learn.nlm.nih.gov. Or you can Google NLM Learning Resources Database. Um, so that's a learn, it's learn L E A R N dot N L M dot N I H dot gov. And you can actually search by PubMed. This is something we've been trying to get tutorials in here as all, all from all these different products and subjects, which there's a lot of them, and this gets overwhelming. Um, but if you, and there's a K-12 education, but if you go down, here's a PubMed, here's a PubMed Central. PubMed Health is a whole different thing, and we have an entire like webinar on how, what, how PubMed Health is different. So if you're interested in that, I can help you out with that to give you the links. Um, and there's all the different resources. So if you were looking for something specific, and you can start here too and search. I like the tutorial page to see all the things that it offers and know what to look for, and especially when I'm starting. This one's kind of nice though because like if you were looking for how to automate PubMed searches, um, this will show you um, that there was a webinar, um, or is a webinar coming up actually, and so it gives you an idea of things that are also coming up. So I'm going to go back here and just do a really brief search. And I, since I used the diabetes example, I'm going to do that here. And this is a keyword search. This is nothing. I'm not going to go into really crazy specifics other than how to narrow some of the searches. So let's do I'm going to see here. Usually I got it to pop up right away. So that's what I'm like. So here's the, the free full text or the full text. Um, if you do free full text, a lot of times you're going to be limiting it to PubMed Central. Not all of it, they could also, they, it, it, but there, there could be other ways that publishers are linking out directly to their articles, mm -hmm. but a lot of it is going to be links into PubMed Central. So I'm just going to choose a random article and like this one is a free full text. I guess officially I think this is a book. Um, but this is going to NCBI Bookshelf, actually. So this was a good example of how to get to there. This was a book. I didn't limit it, I guess, to articles. I just limited it to full text. So this is a full text book that they have on the NCBI Bookshelf. So, so that was, and so that's officially linking to NCBI Bookshelf. Like I said, if it's an article, a lot of times this is, you will be linking. So if I wanted to do, to specify more article types, you I can link further down um, and choose articles, and then more than likely I'm going to be hitting PubMed Central. So that's it's a way, and I know you know people will talk about death by full text, but especially if you're having someone that's standing in front of you and really want to walk away with an article, they want it, they want it now, yeah. This it, it's at least some way to do that quickly. Um, other ways, if you have references, um, you know it can be there's a variety of things. It's just like any other database; it'll just be the index and the reference, and then you'll have to ILL if you don't have a subscription to that journal. So let's go. Oh, ah. okay. So we're going to do, I'm going to click on advanced search here up at the top. And what I also like about PubMed is that it'll keep your history at least for a while. So you can kind of see too what you've been doing. And I that way. where you are. Yeah. So it's like, I always do that. I forget yeah. what I click on. Wait, I clicked on something five minutes ago that was really better than what I'm doing now. How do I get back to that? Yeah. And so that's the part where it can be like, oh, I thought I had the, oh, okay. You know. And so let's see if I can get to my database. And they've been. This is one of those where you get so used to having the filters that come up on the sides quickly that when I don't, I'm like, wait a minute, where did it go? Okay, so let's do another. Well, I'm going to be doing this search later, but I think it takes the availability clear. I don't want clinical trial. So this gives you an idea, though, of how many things you can filter down to, um, which is kind of impressive um, yeah. and maybe a wee bit um, overwhelming for some. 
Um, but also, let's see here, if I do... There we go. Okay. So this is where I'm like, I know it's on this front page somewhere. So to filter down to Medline specifically, you can actually even see what the, um, what the like, real Medline mm -hmm. entry looks like. <laughs> so it's a little crazy, um, and which I think is also kind of fun. Um, but it's, it's, it's very retro. It's like <laughs> when I was first in library school and had a search databases, and those were, we didn't have these pretty interfaces back then. So if you want to at least feel like you're going back in, you know, going back in time, a little nostalgia too. That's a good way to do it. But um, it's and this is where I'm I'm blanking here at the moment, of course, because I'm on the spot. Um, but I do know. I do know there's. There we go. Journal categories. There we go. So now I'm searching Medline. So why it didn't pop up at first and why I forget is when I'm searching on my own computer, I already have this saved as, as uh, permissions. So I had to go to additional filters and choose journal categories. And then under that, there's a Medline specific. Um, and then this, so this will be searching all Medline journals. And also nice here is like this, as you can see, like this says a free PMC article. That's PubMed Central. So you know there's a full text article available if you click that link, and it's coming from PubMed Central. Sometimes the best way to show things is when you're, you know, lost to confuse yourself. <laughs> but so that's that's where I found that this is how I kind of maneuver around PubMed and some of the things I found most useful. Um, and so again, I'm, since I did have a hard time with that, um, in order to limit to Medline journals, I did show additional filters, chose journal categories. And then I was able to choose Medline journals from there. So it's like some people are like PubMed Central, some of the journals in there, like they might have a different scope or people are kind of worried about them. And they've been vetted to a degree, but I understand too is Medline, there's another level. Um, so that's been something we've been asked a number of times is how do I get specifically to the Medline journals? And that's how you do it. I'm going to go home quick. Um, and on the, because over on the right here, there's help. So you should be able to find this pretty much anywhere on PubMed.gov. And there's, it's got a like little um, tutorial book and YouTube tutorials and all that kind of stuff, which you can obviously read and look at and use. Um, there's also like frequently asked questions in this, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit different than that tutorial page that I showed you. So this is another help piece. Um, and there, but there's also, ways that you'll see, let's see here, if you go down to the bottom, there's also like Support Center, which is another good resource, um, and should usually give you to the contact information if you're really having a difficult time. Again, I'm here, you're welcome to contact me, but this will give you some things that like link out for libraries, things that people might be having difficult times finding, it'll give you an idea. Um, and so this is, there's a couple different places, but then there's also NLM chat and contact NLM here. So the support center is really useful any, for any of our resources if you want to contact NLM directly. So if you think, especially if it's a really advanced search or something or advanced tool you're trying to get to use and you feel like they would be able to answer your question better, you are welcome to contact them too. You don't have to go through me. I'm just saying I'm a local resource mm -hmm. that I can be used to. And the chat, is that, would that be like live chat or? I mean, so at certain times, at certain times, yes. And that's what I'm like. I'm like, I will click on it because I know. So they have an ask in Ellen, um, okay. and it gives you examples of where when you can use it. And you can obviously also call them and that kind of stuff. But this is mm -hmm. nice because this will pop up and you know when they're available. And yeah, you're chatting with them while you're in the database, and they can help you figure out what right. you need to do. Yeah. So that's PubMed and kind of that night, a little tutorial of the various things you can do in PubMed. Um, so I'm going to switch over to Medline Plus. So here's the, just even the user interface you can kind of tell is different um, right off the bat. But it looks very like layperson friendly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the part is it's trying to be as self-explanatory as humanly possible. So it's going to have some today's health news headlines that they they use a, um, um, 
a third party to generate those. So it's things though, that are going on in the real world and what people might be interested in looking up right at that moment because they heard about a news article or saw a video spot or a TV spot. Um, so the videos and tools though I think is really fun just for browsing um, and I can click on that here in just a bit. Um, there's also here easy to read materials which have been actually designated easy to read on a variety of subjects. So you can click that and see um, different things like, and the, like I said, these are specific easy to read materials and if you click on one you'll kind of understand but there's, they're on a variety of subjects but not in every subject is going to have a specific easy to read document. All of the Medline Plus overview information is written more for that layperson in mind. It's going to be written at that 6th to 8th grade level, maybe even younger if they can, if they can make, translate the medical terms to do that. Um, but this specifically, um, I'll choose alcohol facts. So easy to read has some specific things that are designated easy to read and what you can look for. And so here's one that and a lot of them have PDFs you can print and with those PDFs are often going to be images, that kind of thing. So this gives you a little idea of the easy to read specific materials. Um, a lot of them were designed to be printed and be able to hand to um, uh, uh, patients, clients, um, co consumers as they're in the office. But also another one that a lot of people find useful is the health information in multiple languages. And Medline Plus does have a sister site that's, if it's in English, it's in Spanish. Um, so for the Spanish speakers, the best way to do it is medlineplus.gov slash espanol or slash Spanish. Um, whereas some, there are a lot of other languages that are a lot of other materials that have other languages also. And I mean, this is a list of different languages that have um, materials in Medline Plus, but not every piece of information is in these languages by any means, except with the exception of Spanish. Um, so it gives you an idea though of what's available. So if you're working with populations that have a wide variety of languages, this can be a really good resource. And it also links to Health Reach, which is another really good resource that I can go into in another webinar sometime. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also from here, those videos and tools. So I, what I think surgery videos are fun, but I understand that other people get a little queasy with them. Yeah, I thought that was the first chance. Like, oh, that was great for you, but love those. And that's, yeah, I'm more like, no, I don't. It depends. Yeah, so, yeah. And you never know if it's going to be something that will horrify you and scar you for life or not. And so for some people, it's like, they can see maybe if they have an operation coming up or if they have a family member mm -hmm. that does you, they can see what's going on. As some people, that might freak them out more than anything, but it's a tool that's here. Um, the health videos, I've recommended that to K-12 populations even before if they need some extra tools for their classrooms okay. um, or if they're trying to demonstrate something in a library, there's something there. Um, what I also like off of, and there's games, there's all kinds of fun stuff here and health, the health check tools. What I really like for librarians um, is evaluating health information. So there's actually a tutorial from the National Library of Medicine. It's a little older, um, or it looks, it looks a little older, I should say, but it's been, it's still got good information of the tutorial of how to um, identify um, good health information. Also from, I'm going to go back to the home page, on the About Medline Plus, another really useful resource is, want to learn more? Training materials, information for librarians and trainers. So you can even do a little search in Medline Plus and just do librarians and trainers and this will pop up as well. So there's a tour um, of the thing. There's brochures available, which if you also want Medline Plus brochures or handouts, please let me know because I do have some that I can mail you um, or bring by depending on where you're at. Um, there's also all of these resources. So there's that evaluating um, health information tutorial that I just clicked on, but in addition to that, there's other ones that have been created around the country. So Medline Plus has some really nice things for librarians and trainers um, that can be useful that people don't necessarily know are here sometimes. Okay, so I'm gonna quick go back to my slides and we'll be back here in just a minute. So I'm actually even gonna keep these small. Well, not full screen, at least they might look a little ridiculous, but. So we did the tours, and I should say too, with Medline Plus, they also have customer support features. So if you look for that customer support, you'll be able to get help just like you did on PubMed. And they might even have, I think, the chat pop up quicker. 
So for activity today, I'm going to show you, and you're welcome to search along um, if you, your bandwidth can take it. <laughs> um, if you want to just watch me, that's okay too. But I am going to search both PubMed and Medline Plus for EpiPen, and then the more specifically, not I should say it's kind of a more generic but specific medical term of what an EpiPen really is, is an epinephrine injection. And to give you an idea of what these two things offer. So I'm going to go back to my PubMed. And to get to this page again, you don't even have to remember this whole long URL. You can just do pubmed.gov, and it'll get you there. So I'm going to just do a keyword again. I'm not going to worry about advanced search, um, but I'm going to search EpiPen to start with. And it gives you some ideas. Um, I can limit by article, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go just with the straight ideas here. Oh my, oh, my filter is still activated, so I'm going to clear all, so I'm not just searching Medline. And so you can see there's about 112 um, resources that came up when I searched specifically for EpiPen, which is um, a, a specific trademarked term. So it's like searching for Tylenol instead of acetaminophen. So you, you give you an idea of if it's if anybody didn't realize that that the official term would be epinephrine injection, which I will also search for here in just a second. But you can kind of get a sense of, so these are all, these are, this is a journal article reference. Um, here's a free PubMed Central article that you can get to about EpiPen. Um, and here's an epinephrine. Another way you could possibly search would be auto-injector instead of just epinephrine injection. Mm -hmm. um, but you get about 112 resources, all um, academic resources. So I'm going to quick search over and do the exact same search in Medline Plus. So again, to get to Medline Plus, gov and if I do EpiPen here it'll I also really like this because it'll start doing some autocorrect suggestions yeah and so I'm just <laughs> gonna do the first one but then so the best part is is it knows it's telling me hey the bigger overview is really epinephrine injection and this is your first most relevant results so that's the one is um, I would click on if I was doing, I just wanted to do some information. And what I also like here is you can see it's pulling out of the drug info. So you can search types of drugs, that kind of thing. If you're wondering like, what does this prescription do? What's more information on this? Mm -hmm. I got this big old sheet for my doctor, but I don't know oh, what I yeah, did with it. With, <laughs> you can always, like tiny text you can't read. I was going to say, always call your doctor or pharmacist too, if you need more of that information. But if you're like, if it's a tiny text you can't read, you want to go to another place to try to help understand it, this can be a really nice place to go. But also don't be afraid to ask your pharmacist or doctor questions because mm -hmm. they're going to be the experts on that. Mm -hmm. um, this is just to help you when you're when you're trying to, to get a grasp of, of your own or maybe if you want to call your pharmacist but honestly aren't sure where to start, here can be a nice place to do it too. So, and that's what I also like this because it'll use things like inject subcutaneously and, and then it for, defines it. And then it <laughs> defines it. So for those that don't know what subcutaneously is just off the top of your head, um, it actually tells you that. Which and that's where I really like Medline Plus. And I used it um, for undergraduate research when like especially like um, like senior students or other biology students were searching a medical topic for the first time and really didn't know where to begin or what what it really was, I would have them go here to just get an overview. And then it also links out to those other credible academic resources. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice place to start, even if you're working with undergrads, this can be a really useful database just to get um, a good search for health science topics. So if I go back to PubMed and do, I'm going to do in quotes, epinephrine injection, which I'm actually glad I have that pulled up in another tab <laughs> or I would not remember how to spell epinephrine right off the top of my head. So I had 112 with EpiPen. I'm already up to 389. Nice. Um, because that's because the epinephrine injection is going to be that more generic, more medical term, and there are other makers of it, not just epipen. Exactly. Yeah. So, the, but that's the thing is, most people, if we talk about like we we don't necessarily know if they actually have a true epipen um, or if they're right. some other maker of that can be similar. But we're almost well, most of us would call it an epipen. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like you know Kleenex and mm -hmm. bathroom tissue. <laughs> Mo most of us aren't saying or facial tissue. Most of us yeah. don't call it. I need a facial tissue. We're no. calling it a Kleenex, whether it is or not. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the same thing kind of here. So when you're, that's the part where I do like Medline Plus because if you necessarily didn't know 
that more specific term. Not that you couldn't find it in PubMed, but Medline Plus will help you give it a little sooner, and especially if you're kind of new to the, the, the health sciences research. Um, so like, and this would be another one, is I probably would do another search too, is auto-injectors, because that keeps coming mm -hmm. up as well. So um, we already expanded the research, we already expanded the results, because it's going to be academic journals. I'm going to go do the same thing over here. And we're already on the epinephrine injection page. But it does, why I'm doing this here too, is the fact is it'll give me a little bit different search results. Oh, and if I can spell epinephrine. I even had it on the page and I didn't do it right. Too many ends. There we go. Uh, yeah. So as long as you haven't completely done that, like you could see is it was already starting to do some autocorrect for me once I like it could find what I was doing. Um, I was typing a little too fast mm -hmm. for it to catch up. But what I also like this is epinephrine injection. So it was I can go back to that drug page where I was at. But here's also links out to credible resources under here. So food allergies. So maybe you have a kid that has been diagnosed with food allergies for the first time, or you have a parent that's wondering about information on this. This links out to Nemers, which has a great kids' health site, and it can talk to about that of what this means. Um, and this this is designed for kids themselves. So maybe it's that that seven eight year old that is wondering what's going on with me. Um, here's something that they can, might be able to help talk to them, and also in Spanish. So that's I that I like this um, for that kind of reason too. Is that search will get you out to those other credible resources like National Jewish Health. Um, <clears throat> so my next search is uh, similar, but instead of a drug, I'm going to use something that we very commonly refer to as the stomach flu. Mm -hmm. And in PubMed. We're not going to get much. <laughs> like, there'll be some. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, this one, it looks like it might have been originally in Swedish, so it might be the yeah. translation. Um, there's a few, like there's some health news that are popping up. So this, there are some news articles that will pop up in here. Um, and not, so it's not, this isn't necessarily just journal articles. So I got six. I go over to Medline Plus, Stomach Flu. I just, for some reason, I keep putting an E at the end, so. <laughs> And uh, pops right up. It says it actually. This is what you're really is, searching yeah. for. <laughs> <laughs> if you're searching stomach flu, this is really what you mean. And that's what I like because it's this big overview, even right on your search page. Like, mm -hmm. you think you mean stomach flu? Well, what you probably mean is, and it does it, and it it, it gives you even a nice little overview right there. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, oh yeah, that is what I mean. So I'm gonna look up gastroenteritis. And that's, that's something that most people would not say, like, I have gastroenteritis no. today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm staying home because I have gastroenteritis. <laughs> Which bonus points may be if you do uh, <laughs> actually use the proper term. Um, but this, and so this will give you that overview. Um, and, and really Medline Plus is saying, like, this is really one and the same. This is what you're looking for. And it'll also then show you, like, here are your results if you want to read in these particular Exactly. Items. So that's where I, and whereas, so if we go back, and this is where, like, again, I used it for undergrads, was, so if you're like, oh, well, now I know what I'm searching for. Enteritis. And let's see if I can actually, I think I misspelled that, let's double check, because I think there's an I in there instead of another E, I might be wrong. Okay. This is where I have, no, I actually I did, did it right, yeah. okay. So we went from six wow. to 185, okay. almost 86,000. Um, <laughs> like, so then you want to narrow down your search. So exactly. Clear, yeah. So here's where the difference is, is that you're, you're looking at, you want to, you want the scientific information with the scientific term as much as humanly possible in PubMed. If you can get to mesh terms, and want to know more about that, and you're wondering what the heck is a mesh term, we can talk about that too another time. Um, or give me a call or send me an email and I'll explain what the heck is going on with those. Um, but for this is where in PubMed you're going to want that scientific ter term because you are looking at scientific journals for the most part. There's some other mm -hmm. stuff, but you're really going to want that term. Whereas Medline Plus is like, most people refer to this as the stomach flu, so here's what you really want to get. Mm -hmm. And that's where I... I that's where the two really differ. And so it's also for pu for public libraries where this can be useful is if you have that person who has been really searching and they already know that, um, you know, that what the terms they need, 
Um, or they have been looking all over the consumer health sites, but what they really want is some deeper information. That can be where um, doing things like Medline Plus um, into PubMed can be really helpful because they might be ready for those journal articles. Mm -hmm. It also might scare them, but <laughs> they might be ready for it. And so here's that, that gastroenteritis topic page. And if I, you can see even at the top, here's that search. So say you're like, they're like, oh yeah, I know this. I realize like this is normally called a stomach flu. I get all of this. I want to see so what's going on in the medical field right now in this area. You can go to journal articles and guess what? It's going to pop up some of the more recent journal articles that's been part of it. So what's going on in the world? What's going on here? Um, but you can also do see more articles from here. And where does it take you? Well, it takes you over to PubMed. And here, and it even has a nice, pretty search oh, wow. string already there for you. Um, so, and it, like I said, I was just doing a keyword search before. This one is going to be specifically looking um, at articles, and you can look at the search string to see what it's all narrowing to. Um, but the, that's where I really like Medline Plus um, as a place to start for research too. But if people have kind of moved beyond this, then it can take you on out to PubMed. Yep. So I don't know if we've had any questions. Uh, see nothing so far. Yeah, if anybody, if you have any questions, anything you want to see more detail, anything about any of the databases that you're not sure about, or you're wondering what they can do, um, what you can do in them, type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Let me know. Um, if you have your own microphone, it says earlier, you can also use your own microphone to um, ask your questions. Just type in, "I have a microphone. Please unmute me," and um, you can ask your question that way. Um, I do I do see how depending on a lot of this comes out comes from I think doing your reference interview in the first place talking to the person and seeing what where they're coming from um, are you you know, yes. is Medline plus more for um, general public and once you're if you're doing research or ready to jump up um, PubMed central will be more for the more advanced so they do have different focuses but that's what you've got to figure out in the first place is yeah. why they're doing this research, where they're coming from in it, where their level is of, of knowledge already. And that's in the part two is especially if they've kind of already had that knowledge but maybe haven't done a lot of searching on their own in a way, like they've, they've pulled off what they could, but if like PubMed searching is a little nerve wracking for them, mm -hmm. but they want to walk out with an article, that's where maybe going to PubMed Central would be a good place to start instead of just doing the filters. Because it, it can be, you know, you're doing full text there, you know what you're getting, you know where you're getting out right away. Um, but for me as a librarian, I'd much rather start with that bigger database and be able to limit. So mm -hmm. that's PubMed Central, that's where that can be a plus. But also part of the reason I didn't show it is because it is really still incorporated in PubMed and you're going to find most of the PubMed Central stuff mm -hmm. there. Um, and I've yeah. I've been used Medline Plus. I know public librarians use it. I know hospital librarians use it. I know academic librarians that use it. Um, and PubMed can be the same, but especially for those that aren't used to academic um, or and and especially even health sciences searching because that's mm. even a whole different beast. It can be overwhelming. So this is the part two is I'm here. Mm. And that's like, what? <laughs> I'm here. If you have questions, if you have, if you would like to have training for you or your staff, um, or if you, um, or professors at your college, or if you know of a group of patrons in your library that are really interested in health research and want someone to come in and um, work with them on how to search. Not that you all can't do that, but I also know that time is limited too. So if you have yeah. another resource, you are welcome to to call me. Um, I. I am focused on Nebraska for outreach, but I do things like this that is can be um, broadcast nationally, internationally even. Um, but also, I can do online training, but I also can do in-person training, especially for the state of Nebraska. So if that's something you're interested in, now I will say I'm based in Omaha, so if it's western Nebraska, that takes a little more planning. <laughs> it's not something I can yeah. do um, perhaps on a whim, um, but I also... I also know how important in-person training can be. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing is I also don't leave that out. Um, if there's anything I can do. And there's no cost for this, right? Correct. Thank yeah, you. 
That's what I'm sort of sure people wonder is like how much is it going to cost to bring her out here to do this? And yeah, yeah, that's I. This is part of my job. It's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also if you're really wanting in-depth PubMed, you're like I know the basics, I know all that. But when I get to the advanced level, creating a search screen for search string for systematic review. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Um, but if that's kind of the thing you want, there are so many wonderful webinars um, and trainings and courses offered by fellow NNLM people. Um, also, we have a national training office that does specifically things on that. And that's where I included that link here. That yeah, you, so as I said, there's, there's other things out there that you can attend, yeah. And you can get to our region's training from this, but you can also get to what other NNLM regions and offices are offering around the country. And so it's not just what we have here and what the, the six of us can do, it's what all of us as a team from NNLM can do. And they will also include National Library of Medicine trainings on there too. I don't know if it's all of them, but I know they do have some of them on there, which is nice. You can click on that and see if it should open up. Oh, it went to the new window. That's cool. So we have, um, so here's our training opportunities, upcoming classes, and it'll show you even what our sponsoring um, RML, which is like, like I said, is I'm in the continental region, so we're MCR, um, so that's where these acronyms come into play. But like our national training office is NTO. It's from PubMed for librarians. Using evidence-based search features. So and this is one depth, of a yeah. series of six, I think. Yeah. And they do the series pretty frequently. Um, and making PubMed work for you is a course that we have coming up here um, and that you can go ahead and register for. So this is, and you can, like I said, you can search um, all, of, um, all of what we have to offer across the NNLM using this. And um, if, if you have any questions about the region, about what the trainings we can offer, again, don't hesitate to contact me. It's nice to see all these guys, sh everyone sharing all of this information rather than saying you only in our area, you can only use our things. It's much nicer to be. We have so it's many like really wonderful We are resources. all about yeah. sharing <laughs> and, and, and interlibrary things and, and helping each other, not being very, you know, uh, my, my, mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you're from, I know there's a couple people throughout the U.S. and on the webinar today. Mm -hmm. If you're from throughout the U.S., you have people like me um, in your region that, and if you're not sure who to contact, feel free to email me still and I can put you in contact with them. Um, again, we're, right. we're about sharing, we're about Reach helping each other out. If you want in person and, or in training done in your state, you would reach out to your individual um, person there, yeah. We might have, do we have a question? Um, oh, yes. Oh, well, not a oh, just no. this has been very helpful. Woo. Thanks for presenting. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Oh, and I will ask a favor. I forgot. I have this at oh, the yes. end here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Crystal will send this out after the webinar, yes. but also um, if, if you can quickly type the URL and feel free here. Um, it's a rather Don't panic if you can't get it. Everyone will be getting an email <laughs> after the show's over saying, thank you for attending, and please go here, click on this link to get to the animation. And it really does, like it helps us show um, who we're reaching across the nation, um, but also it helps me with feedback of if what I'm doing is hitting home. Um, and again, it helps demonstrate what we're doing because um, the National Library of Medicine has to answer to NIH, who has to answer to Congress. Um, so we need we're, all these stats. We appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> More evaluations give, they'll, they'll, they'll know that these are useful yes. resources and that these organizations are things that need to keep, keep being supported. Exactly. So that's where I appreciate it a lot if you can do that. And, um, you know, and again, please be honest. And if there's comments, there's a box there mm -hmm. where you can say, or, and that can also be a place, um, although you'd have to include your contact information. If you really wanted to do it, you could put it in the comment box and say, hey, I would like more follow up on this. Mm -hmm. But again, you're welcome but to email. The evaluation itself by default is, is um, anonymous. Correct. So, yeah. So that's part of it too. We, we, you, that's where I want you to be as honest as you want. <laughs> if there's something different that could be done, yeah. Yeah. And if you want um, Annette to come back here and talk about something that's specifically more in depth, you saw uh, come back on Encompass Live. Let her know that. You know, we'll schedule more things. Um, like I said, I, I, this was a session. Actually, I didn't say at the beginning that you had done somewhere yeah. else that I saw it on. Um, I, one of the I had the done an, extravaganza. Yeah, the okay. training extravaganza for the Southeast Library System here. I've done so many things this. <laughs> Well, Which one I saw? And it was funny is because um, Todd Schlechty from um, 
the from cells um, had asked me to do it after he saw the presentation done by one of my <laughs> colleagues who's yeah. at the Greater Midwest Region, um, out of based out of Iowa, um, <laughs> University of Iowa, and she had done okay. it for the Iowa Library Association last year, and he was at that conference and said, "Hey, can we do something like this here for this population?" Yeah. And so that's the part is, and she she shared her slides with me, and I tweaked it a little bit for the populations I knew going on there and for mm -hmm. here, and so it's been wonderful. And out of Jacqueline's yeah. presentation from GMR. Um, we have this one. So I also appreciate um, what, what we do around the region. Absolutely, yeah. So we're always looking for new things here to bring on the show, too, because we do have, a, like I just mentioned, the training extravaganza, the in-person sessions, uh, our state conference. Um, but for people who can't get to those, that's why we and NLM does all these online options for you as well. So we'll put it wherever. All right, well, it doesn't look like any urgent questions have been typed in while I've been chatting, so that's fine. Um, but if you do have any, you know where to find them at. She's right up in Omaha, <laughs> and she can answer any of your questions about this. So um, we'll wrap it up for today's show. As, she, as we said, you will be getting an a, um, email uh, within the hour. Um, it's an automated email about um, thank you for attending. Here's, this is your official um, notice that you um, get credit for attending this session and the link to the evaluation. So please do um, submit that. Uh, let's see, let's get into this. So that will wrap it up for today's show. I'm going to go over here. And if you can just help me out, just type in Encompass Live, and we will get to... I had it. This is what happens <laughs> when I'm typing off to the yeah. side. There we go. <laughs> and um, if you don't pull it out from that, Encompass Live is actually the only thing so far called that on the internet. Yeah, yes. So um, if you just Google Encompass, Encompass Live, you'll you'll come across our page. Um, but this is our, our website off the Library Commission's page. We have our upcoming sessions, but our archives are right here linked underneath. So this is where today's show will be listed. Probably by the end of the day today, I'll have it all processed through and uploaded um, onto YouTube. Um, this was last week's of recording. Um, I have her slides, so we'll post those up as well. And then I'll put in a few links to um, the main uh, things that she mentioned the, um, that you were demoing, the PubMed and the Medline. Those two put links up to everything. So it'll be on there. Everyone who attended here today or registered for today's show, I will send you an email automatically letting you know that it's there too. Um, so go there and look for that. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is From Collections to Commons, How We Turn Stacks to Student Spaces at UNL. Um, a few years ago, actually, um, 2014, and they just opened in, 20, they started in 2014, opened in 2016, um, University of Nebraska-Lincoln um, switched up a whole bunch of their space to have a learning commons. Um, and it was a huge project. And this is one that I also saw at a previous me last year session somewhere. Um, so some of the people from UNL will be over here with us um, next week to talk about how they pulled it off and all the changes going on over there and how things have been going since. It's been a little over a year now since it's actually officially opened. Um, so we'll see how things have been going. So please do register for that and for any of our other upcoming shows. I've got all the July dates in here. August sessions are being worked on and scheduled and finalized as we speak, so they will be added as well. So keep an eye on our page to see what um, new things are added. Um, also, we are on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do pop over there and let's see. Hopefully this little there. Um, it's still loading. It looks it needs our header up there. Anyway, um, I post when new shows are coming up, when recordings are available. This is a reminder, as you can see here, log in right up, you know, on the fly to today's show. So, um, oops, something's slowing down Facebook a lot. Um, so if you are big on Facebook, give us a like over there, and um, you can keep up on things that we're doing. Let me just close that for a minute. We try to. There we go. Okay. So other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for coming down here and, um, and joining us from Omaha. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. All right. Bye. -bye.